Welcome back to another E3 conference! That is right, everybody, that's right. We're back with some more E3 conferences. It's the coolest part of all. Because it is PlayStation, and I like to point out, I was fanboying all over this. God almighty. I was freaking out at the TV. Like, I'm not even joking. The TV is, like, literally right there. And I was sitting around here, and uh, literally just freaking out and just screaming. Like, even, even my family heard me, too. So, at the same time, I just was enjoying it so much that um, it didn't really matter what, what I was doing at this point. But yeah, literally, PlayStation, E3, hands down, one of the best things this year has ever shown. And I am so, so glad that I got it. And it was just one of the things that I've been waiting for, uh, for E3, to show literally newer games than literally everything that uh, everybody else has been showing, which is pretty much the same thing, except like DLC and that. And uh, I'm like, come on, show some really cool stuff. Like almost like the whole E3 would be really cool if there was like just new games. Literally new games. It would be so awesome to see that. But PS4 and all that just literally brought hands down. Sony did a good job of actually bringing that to E3. So I, I literally have to give them like congrats to that. Like literally amazing, amazing job. So, uh, but anyway, since I'm done fanboying over that to explain everything of what I've done uh, watching that conference, let's go to the real deal for PlayStation E3 conference as I tell you guys what has happened and to explain everything of why I was fanboying over the whole conference in general. So, anyways, let's start. Alright, so pretty much they showed something very interesting right off the bat, which I was not expecting to see at first. It was literally God of War. Now, I can't, it's not God of War 4. I just want to point that out. It is not God of War 4. It is just God of War. Uh, to literally clear everything up. I know to us it is God of War 4 because we're fanboys and we played all the games all the way up to now. But they're just calling it God of War once again. And uh, it's. I hope this is a trilogy. Could this be a trilogy? I really hope so because that would be cool. I would love to see another trilogy of God of War once again. But uh, literally, guys, it's literally awesome to see Kratos back once again. It's very interesting, I will say, that they gave him a full beard, and uh, literally, he had a kid. What the frick did he get in our kid? I understand that he was he settled down and all that stuff after killing all the Greek gods and all that stuff, but, like, I thought he already had a family that was dead. And, like, you know, he, he already was, like, didn't want to have another family because he lost all his family because he killed them. The whole point, he killed them. But, yeah, he's got a kid now. So I, I don't know how that's going to play out in the game. I'm actually pretty curious. Because, is something going to happen? Will Kratos somehow join, like, another clan for uh, the gods? For another, uh, you know, different group of gods? Like, I know I mentioned before about uh, a video for Thor. So, maybe he's going to join them and then they'll, he'll have to do something very bad or something. And then he's going to get his revenge, of course. Who knows? But I really would love to see Kratos back once again. And uh, I can tell he got older. I just want to point that out. He looks older. God. What happened to that poor man? I guess uh, age, uh, ageness really kills you, I guess. I don't know. But literally, game looks great. Looks awesome. And uh, I know there's been some, uh, you know, some really bad um, negativity stuff that people have been pointing out about God of War. But literally, it's, it just looks good. I, 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 I'm pretty much on the positive side on this part. It looks great. I just fanboying over that stuff because it's God of War. Okay, I'm a big fan. It's been a long time since we got a continuation since number three. And I've been waiting for this for years. So I'm just excited. It doesn't matter at this point. I just want to play it. Just give me the game. I'll be fine with this. So, But yeah, that's God of War. Can't wait to see it. So the next game is Days Gone, which actually is one of the guys from the Star Wars game from Force Unleashed. And it's really cool to see him in the game because pretty much it's almost like a zombie game. Like, almost like Last of Us. It feels like Last of Us. When they showed the trailer, it was pretty much like, you know, I was a band and all this stuff. It's just me and this other guy and, you know, and it's just us and this bike. And we're just riding along everywhere we go now, trying to survive. So it, it's just really interesting to see how that's going to turn out because... Literally, these zombies can run fast, and there's a lot of them. It, it's not like Last of Us where you see like a bunch at a little spot, and then it's like, oh, I can get away from them, not no biggie, you know? No, these things will chase you. 
These things will come after you. They don't care anymore. They will kill you one way or another. So it's really interesting to see a game like this, something like Last of Us, like I said, but with a different hype for a zombie game. So I'm actually curious to play this game. I actually really would love to see how this game goes. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I just want to play this game. Give me the game again. <laughs> this is pretty much how this game, literally, the summary is going to go. I just want to point that out. So The Last Guardian was shown once again. And this is the third time that they show this at E3. And I just want to point this out. They finally have a release date, which is October 25th. Like, how many years has this been game that's been waiting? Literally waiting for so long and they've been updating and updating to the next console, the next con- Like, man, how long? We, we just wanted to play the game the whole time and like, these guys have been waiting. But I will say though, there is a saying that if you wait long enough, you will get a big prize out of it pretty much for waiting. And uh, yeah, so we wait a long time. So uh, let's hope for uh, the benefit that this game actually brings us something that we want to see and it's going to be really cool to see what is going to happen with it. So can't wait to see what Last Guardian is going to turn out like. So. so Horizon was shown again. This is the second time that they showed us at E3 which is actually really cool and they showed a lot more this time than just a trailer. Horizon literally is like this old medieval, like not medieval, but it's more like uh, they're at the time like where there's um, like if they're like uh, like cavemen sort of or something like that where you know they just have arrows and stuff like that and you know they ride horses and, and stuff well technically cavemen don't ride horses but you get the idea it's that it's like a time from back in the day but at the same time it's a futuristic thing because the animals are robots and it's just interesting that it plays out like that like just a freaking t-rex that's a robot like man that is so cool, and you get to shoot arrows at this thing. Like, I, I definitely would love to play that, right? It's gonna be really cool to see how that plays out, so. So the next game is called Detroit Becoming Human, which about an android named Connor. Now, this I thought was very interesting for a new game, because one, it's about investigating a murder or a case or whatever, uh, pretty much trying to get to the ending, where you gotta get to this uh, one particular spot of the story to literally show the story of how you dealt so far. So literally, there's so many different ways of how you can get a different ending for each part of the story up for the case. Now, I don't know how many cases there are, but the way it shows is that when you're investigating this mission, uh, by the end of it, the, literally, there's a different way for everybody to have a different progress of how things could go. So that's why I thought it was really interesting to see that and I would love to play a game with that because I actually played a game about a couple months ago where it actually involves something like that. Uh, where it's pretty much you gotta work and uh, pick up uh, investigation and stuff like that and then it ends up right there at the point where this part of the case is just how your story is gonna turn out. So I actually really enjoy something like this and I definitely will get this game because I just love the way the game is. And plus, like I said, the, the way the whole concept of story, it sounds really awesome. Everybody gets a different story. So like, hey, if you watch anybody, they're gonna have a different story, they, different ways. I'm just saying, sounds pretty cool, so. So Resident Evil Biohazard, literally this game looks more horrific than ever for a Resident Evil game since pretty much the fourth game. Literally, if you guys look at it, the pretty much five, six, seven, or five, six. I don't think there was a seven yet, was there? No, I don't think so. But anyways, literally, uh, Resident Evil six uh, and five, pretty much. I, I get them four as well. They're more action-wise. Like, sure, four was like a little bit horror, but it wasn't like horrific. You know what I mean? So it's very interesting to see like how Biohazard plays out so so well. It literally felt. Uh, definitely not like Resident Evil. It's definitely a horror game and it literally looks amazing. The demo is out by the way guys if you guys want to try it out, but I will say it literally is something to try out if you guys are horror fans. And I'm definitely uh, a horror gamer fan so I definitely will try this game out and if you guys want to see me play it, I definitely will play it for you guys because it looks awesome and I definitely want to play this thing so. So anyway, speaking about Resident Evil 7, it's on the VR! Literally, you guys can play the game on the VR now because it's like, hey, who, who wouldn't want to play Resident Evil Horror on uh, a VR, right? 
Who wouldn't? It's one of the greatest things I think a lot of people would love to play is Resident Evil 7 on the VR, which I think a lot of people would love to have experience like this on the VR, because who doesn't want to like, literally put yourself in the shoes as the player in the realm for Resident Evil where there's zombies and like literally jump scares and stuff like that and like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. That pretty much just sums everything up for you, like right there. So, um, but yeah, that's definitely something I really look forward to is the VR and it's gonna be really cool to see. So anyway, speaking about PlayStation VR, it is actually coming out, of course, this October and will be $3.99, of course, if you guys want a PlayStation VR, which I like to point out, there are 50 games coming out the exact day with the VR. Yes, like, I wanna point this out. This is actually a rare experience, 50 games for something that's kind of like a console. Like, that's rare to see for anything, for a gaming thing, that's like this. Because um, we've never seen that for consoles where there's 50 games come out literally for a console. Unless there was way back in the day. But I don't remember. <laughs> so, literally, this is something really cool to see for the VR to actually bring a lot of games out. And that, this is just something awesome. But anyway, speaking about the VR, there is a game called Farpoint, which is literally like a space marine where you're on Mars and you gotta discover what's happening and plus defend yourself. Now, I like to point something out. If I actually got sent on Mars by myself, I like to point something out. I'm bringing a crew, okay? I would never go by myself on a planet that we never technically really discovered a lot about because we don't know what is on this planet. And with Farpoint, there's practically stuff on this uh, planet in the first place where we could die by the creatures. There you go. <laughs> that is my answer. Bring people. Don't go alone. Whoever said to go alone on a mission? Just saying. But uh, anyways, guys, there's another thing as well, which is called Batman Arkham VR. You get to play as Batman. They didn't really show too much about it. They pretty much just showed like a small, small trailer where you are Batman. It's probably going to be a really different experience than what the games have been. But it's definitely going to be something I am definitely going to be checking out because I would love to play as Batman. And I definitely would love to go fight the Joker. Like, literally, I would love to like literally just like have him ray my face but like, going down, Joker. You're going down, buddy. That's right. I can't believe I will say that they showed Star Wars stuff, which is Star Wars X-Wing VR. Oh my god, I was so happy to see a new game for Star Wars because I was really, really hoping that they were going to show that at EA. But no, they didn't. They just talked about the same game, so I was a little disappointed. But I was so glad when they showed it literally at PlayStation, and I was just astonished to see this. Especially going to VR, and I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't matter what kind of game it is for Star Wars for VR, I would definitely play this. It's Star Wars. Who, who would not play a game that is Star Wars on VR? Like, literally, I would definitely play any game for Star Wars on VR, because it looks cool and awesome, and you get to go to space. So, I thought that was really cool. But anyway, speaking about also VR stuff, Final Fantasy... Literally 15 is also going to be a release this year, and actually they have Final Fantasy VR, which is pretty much the same game, except you're a shooter person. Yes, you get to shoot people with a little gun, and you're just like, boo boo. <laughs> Literally, that's how it turns out. It's that, and uh, it, it's just really cool to see how it actually turns out, and it actually seems pretty interesting. Sure, you're not fighting like with Cloud and all that, but hey, you get to fight with them instead. Isn't that cool enough? I hope so, because I I definitely would get the game just to play that, because it looked pretty cool. So they did show Infinity Warfare at PlayStation, and this is the only conference that they showed Infinity Warfare. I will say I was really shocked at first that it was Infinity Warfare, because I'm like, this is not Call of Duty. Definitely not Call of Duty. And um, it, it was actually a really interesting experience to watch the gameplay because it's not something that you see normally on Call of Duty. And I think that's what Infinity wanted to try was something brand new and something that is not a normal thing. So, you know, I give them a little credit for what they're trying to do and understanding it. But unfortunately, this is Call of Duty. And like, I, I understand that, you know, People want to play Call of Duty, not not play Space Marines 
because it's not Call of Duty. But literally though, the game looks pretty good, I will say. Uh, sure, I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me on that, but literally the game looks pretty good. It's fast paced, everything. And that's definitely something I would love to try it out. It's something more fast paced than ever for Call of Duty. So, you know, I'm going to give it a try. I will say, I probably will give it a try. I love campaigns for Call of Duty, so I'll probably play it. Why not? But anyways, they did show as well the remastered Modern Warfare. Yes, who does not love Modern Warfare? I love it when they were showing the green lines, of course, because that's how I knew it was the remastered for Modern Warfare. And it's definitely something I would love to play once again, because the PS3 version for the multiplayer is broken. Definitely broken. Don't ever play the PS3 version ever again on multiplayer. <laughs> it's terrible. So one thing I thought was really amazing to see, which was Crash Bandicoot. They actually announced Crash Bandicoot 1 and Crash Bandicoot 2 and Warzone to be remastered. I was literally astonished. I'm like, are they going to show a new game? Are they going to show this? But still, even just remastering the old PlayStation games is definitely something I want to look forward to in, on the PS4. And I like that for that reason because... I haven't played these games in a long time. Like, I have the first Crash Bandicoot, but I haven't played Warp Zone or the second one in years. So it's very going to be interesting to see those games come back and literally become a child again and play these games once again because it's going to be a fun thing. It's definitely going to be a fun thing. And we've been waiting for a long time. Especially since last year when he showed the Crash Bandicoot shirt. Just, just saying it, you know. Just point that out. You, you gave us a hint, and yeah, I was hoping that you show it, because if you didn't, you know how many people were going to be disappointed? A lot. <laughs> Just saying. So anyway, since we were speaking about Crash Bandicoot, Skylanders has a DLC character, which is Crash Bandicoot. You can play the character in the game. I just want to point out, he looks like a mascot in the game. He literally looks like a mascot. He's definitely not uh, the type of Crash Bandicoot that we normally play. Uh, this one looks a little more crazier, and uh, like I said, it looks like a mascot. So it's definitely something interesting, and I couldn't stop laughing at the character. <laughs> it, it's definitely not the right kind of Crash Panicker, but it's definitely in this dimension just hilarious. He he's just he literally just looks funny in in this, and uh, you know if I if I definitely like Skylanders, I probably would play because of Crash Panicker, but. Literally though, I, I probably won't get Skylanders, unfortunately, because um, I'm not a big fan of Skylanders, not, not to be mean or anything, it's just, it's just not my type of game anymore, because they got rid of Spyro, and he's not there anymore, so it's just like, it, it's not, it's not the same game as like, you know, the older games were. So LEGO Star Wars Episode 7 was shown at uh, PlayStation, where pretty much they are just showing another teaser trailer and all that stuff. And also, too, the demo was out today. Literally today. You guys can play it literally for until the whole game comes out if you want. Play the demo! If you're having fun just playing the demo like I did um, for a very long time since I couldn't get the game, then uh, definitely get it and just play the demo until the real game comes out. Because then that way, it saves you a lot of time of trying to play the game and can improve until you get the real game. So anyways, Kojima! showed up at Sony. You have no idea how much I was freaking out here. Seeing Kojima show up with literally his first game that he's shown at Sony's conference. Oh my god. Just literally seeing Kojima there was making my night. And just it was amazing to see how much popularity this guy got from Konami. Just saying like this guy became a big big person for game industry and it's so awesome to see his own company and also to see a game called Death Stranding and uh, literally the guy that plays in PT and also Silent Hill and stuff like that um, literally is in this game as well and I think it's really cool that he's following Kojima because I, I really enjoy like seeing his character in horror games because like he, he really suits it I'm not saying like you know, because he's an actor and all that. I'm just saying, he, he actually does suit, like, these games. And I really appreciate the seeing him back in an Arkojima game. And uh, I think a lot of people were probably hoping to see him again, you know, in a Kojima game once again. So, we got it. That's all that matters, right? That's all. 
And the last and final thing is Spider-Man. Oh my god, what? I don't even know what to tell you about Spider-Man, guys. It's literally amazing. It's way better than any other Spider-Man game I have seen so far. Especially, like, the movie Spider-Man. This one takes the cake. And I know it's been made by the real Marvel. Like, it literally has the same suit, sort of, like uh, Marvel Cinema. Uh, and it's just really cool to see that kind of suit come to life in a game and So many different moves that you guys can do in the game like literally if you are um, in the, the What is it called like the newspaper office or wherever you can literally jump off the walls and the desk and everything like it's a lot more than like usual stuff I will say so it's really cool to see that you can go in buildings and stuff like that as well So I'm very happy to see that and uh, it looks like something I definitely will get. I really am hyped for Spider-Man, and I can't wait for the game to come out. So, but anyways, that's pretty much it, guys, for Sony's conference. It's amazing. I really enjoy it. It's definitely something I can't wait for the games. I know you guys can pre-order games, get the demos now, and all that stuff. Phenomenally amazing. So, anyways, if you guys literally want to get all these games that I said that were free to play right now and all that stuff literally if you guys don't remember like me right now you can go back and check on the videos because I do mention in the videos that you guys can go to the websites of the companies and literally register and get the free demo and all that stuff so it's really cool some some just literally are saying that it's free demo go go download it like Resident Evil 7 pretty much you guys can do that so but other than that that's it for now guys hope you guys enjoy watching E3 uh, the next video will be Nintendo, so we'll see how that turns out, and uh, I'm kind of in intriguing to see how NX does. That's one thing I'm really excited for is NX, because they talk about so much that I want to see what's going to happen. So anyways guys, hope you guys are watching, I'll see you guys later. Peace out everybody, have a great day.